Our next speaker, the <coughs> Illinois Comptroller, Suzanne Mendoza. Good morning, officers, families, and all of us gathered here today to honor the sacrifices of our heroic members of law enforcement. I'm sorry for my voice, but I'm actually struggling through a pretty good case of pneumonia. So I'm not sure if I can get through my speech, but I'm going to do my best. If I can't, I will ask Dave to do me the honor of finishing for me. I wanna thank the Illinois Police Officers Memorial Committee President, former Lieutenant Sangamon County Sheriff Dave Johnson, for your leadership and for the invitation to once again join all of you here today. It is truly my honor to be here with you. Each year, it pains me more and more to see even more families join the club that no one ever willingly signs up for, the Gold Star families. The sacrifices that our police officers and their loved ones make go unappreciated by most. Many of you have heard me say before that as the sister of a Chicago police detective sergeant who was permanently disabled on the job, the gravity of the sacrifices that you all make hit particularly co close to home. Just a few days ago, I and so many others saw and felt the collective broken hearts of Officer Luis Huesca's family as they mourned the vicious murder of their young, vibrant, kind, and loving son and brother. Chicago and Illinois lost one of our very best to one of our very worst. My heart breaks for those among us today who, like them, are grieving such unfathomable loss. To the Preston family, my heart goes out to you. A la familia Lazo. Mis más sentidos pésames estoy con ustedes en este dolor. And while it is with a heavy heart, that I stand before you today to commemorate the bravery of our fallen officers. I wanted to focus my remarks on the officers who are thankfully still standing. Let me start by saying thank you. God bless you. May he keep you all safe. Each and every one of you puts on the uniform and does so, knowing that you might not make it home at the end of your tour of duty sacrificing your life for a perfect stranger. That is a sacrifice that is fueled by the greatest type of love. Yet too many times we've gathered here after an officer's life has been robbed by a perfect monster, fueled by the worst type of hate. I'm disgusted by the vilification of our police force. This vilification of the very people who are serving and protecting us is putting each and every one of you in danger. As a society who claims to stand up for goodness, we can't continually dehumanize our heroes and expect them not to be dehumanized by the worst of society. It is wrong to show more concern for the cop killer than for the cop. Police are human beings with feelings and families. The job does a number on all of them. I have talked to police that have pulled dead, mangled bodies from cars, compassionately lied to people as they were dying, telling them they were going to be okay, holding their hand, watching as their life fades out. Police who've held dying babies, held towels on gunshot wounds, or performed CPR on someone even when they knew it wouldn't make a difference just to make their family members feel better. I know police who have bought lunch for mentally ill people who hadn't eaten for a while, or police 
who gave breaks and second chances to people who deserve them. Police who've let little kids that don't have much sit in their squad and pretend they're a cop to make their day a little more special. And I know police who've prayed for people they didn't even know because they needed it. These are stories the public rarely hears. But I know that each and every one of you in uniform understands what I'm talking about. Our brave officers run towards danger instead of away from it. They do it for us. They get shot at, stabbed, spit on, punched, cursed out. And who's standing up for them? I can't even imagine what that does to you or your heart. I know that the dedicated men and women in blue don't put on their uniform every day for the amazing pay, the wonderful hours, the missed holidays, shortened life expectancy, or suicides. They do it because they have a higher calling rooted in love and wanting to protect us and their families from the world's horrors. They see and take on the worst of the world's problems so that we can all pretend that the world is a beautiful and safe place. We have them to thank for our comfortable and safe lives, safe lives. So again, thank you, and I love you for it. But these officers don't need us to love them. They know in this day and age that it is the exception when they are respected, much less supported by us, their elected officials. What they need is for their elected officials, their command, and the public to let them do their jobs. <laughs> to not prevent them from protecting the overwhelmingly number of good people from an overwhelmingly number of bad people looking to cause them harm. It's time to recalibrate. If we truly want to honor our fallen heroes, let's commit to honoring those that are living and breathing, sacrificing for us in this most noble but thankless job. They deserve our utmost respect, our love, and our full support. To the men and women in law enforcement here today, thank you from the bottom of my heart. For what it's worth, I love you and appreciate you. May God watch over you. St. Michael protect you. And may you always return home safely at the end of your watch. I'm sure you're all glad, me especially, I did not have to stand up and finish that for her. I would not have had the same passion that we all know she feels and we all appreciate. Our next speaker will be Elizabeth French, family survivor, Officer Ella Grace French, Chicago Police Department. End of watch, August 7th, 2021, member of Illinois Cops. <laughs> 